So a very ancient biblical principle and Matthew 13, eight through nine says this, seed fell on good soil. It produced a crop 160 or 30 times more than what was planted. Those who have ears should listen and understand. Yeah, well, that's me. That's you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> weeds, weeds right now. I mean, uh-huh. it was against, this was not necessarily against weeds, but the profit uh-huh. that the actual information is from plant. And this happens right now. Weeds are pregnant. Oh my gosh. Maturing seed heads on plants have hundreds of seeds and that each seed bomb, you know, each uh-huh. plant is going to create. So you have a hundred more. So you have one that's creating a hundred or more. And then you have that seed that falls and germinates. That's creating a hundred more. Uh, you know, yeah. that's why there's such a fight in your lawn with crabgrass. But now like Johnson grass and some of the weeds that, that form in the sidewalk cracks. Gosh. I I know that I have weeds at home that I have to deal with. And I have crabgrass that is really creeping into landscape beds. I need to control that. At Bloomers at the store where we have a, uh, say, a seam where side where um, the driveway meets another section, there are weeds that are growing. And what happens, and, and Hula, you've seen this, it's like the weeds like push out they want to the concrete yeah. or they push out right. the the sidewall cracks and, or the driveway and it can split apart pavement over time so if you don't control those weeds all of a sudden you've got crumbly you know a crumbly, crumbly concrete or a crumbly yeah, uh, that, yeah. blacktop i i don't know i i mean how, how is your yard You've been distracted. Uh, I had really. I had a garden bed. <laughs> that was, yeah, I know I have been <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, anyway. I had a garden bed this spring. Yeah, and it's all weeds. It's all weeds. Yeah, it's about three foot tall. <laughs> well, you're growing a nice crop then. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so you'll have an abundant <laughs> harvest. Oh yeah. And see, that's bit. the problem is that if you don't get the weeds before they go to seed head or before they drop their seed. You know, you have to get them now. You can't wait. Uh, We've talked about this principle before and that the fact that weeds want to create fruit. And then instead of being a tomato, they've got hundreds of seeds to reproduce. You know, another biblical prophecy, right? (laughs) You know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's that they will take over. Oh, completely. Absolutely. So what do you do? What are you going to do? If you have weeds out there and you see the, the little foxtail that's growing on some, or you can see like where it's, no, those aren't leaves. Those are little, you know, looks like little dots. Those are seeds waiting to burst through and create basically more maintenance, more problems than you have right now. A hundred to, you know, anywhere 160 or 30 times what you have now. So let's talk about it. Well, they're pulling weeds. Oh yeah, <laughs> is a gr- is a is. great way to get some exercise. It also is a great way to to make sure you're getting the weeds, and you have to get them out by the root. Completely, that's right. And because if you don't get them out and kill the all the way down to the root, you're just wasting your time oh, because yeah. they're just going to grow back. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe you cut the seed heads off. It uh, again, that's not. That's not what we're looking yeah. to do. We're looking to kill the weeds, keep totally. the grass, kill the weeds that are in areas. And and my professor in, in college, <laughs> he used to say, you know, the description of a weed is a plant in the wrong spot. So a tomato plant could actually be a weed. You know, it, it's there a it's like we get them all the time where, where all of a sudden you've got, uh, say, a ornamental plant. Uh, say right now, I have uh, morning glories. They're a weed right now because they're growing in the wrong spot. Uh, there's uh, types of blackberries that will, you know, birds will eat and then they'll go and they'll poop them out. And then all of a sudden they're in that nice That's little nice. capsulated thing to grow tr- another another crop. And it's the same thing. That's a weed. That's a weed. Um, I can't, I've told you on this show how much I hate mulberries because they become weeds and they become trees and then they become an issue where you have to cut them down with a chainsaw and everybody knows the issues with 
Spotted Lanternfly, their host plant is Tree of Heaven. That's a weed. weed. So again, you need to decide how you're going to do it. And if you're pulling them out by hand, you need to get them out by the by the root. Back on the farm, uh, we used to hoe the fields by hand. Uh, we had tractors that would cultivate, but in between the plants, we would have to hoe. That's a tough job. And, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't the best job on the farm. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe another reason why I hate tomatoes. But anyway, <laughs> that what you have to do is you have to get that root out. If you are if you are a hoer and you have a garden and, and you don't want to bend over and pick those weeds out, what you have to do is hoe, and a hoe is a... I guess a small rectangle on the end of, of a uh, a wooden stick. We, we call them stick tools, but it's because it's actually, you know, it has a handle, like a shovel, like a long-handled shovel. But you don't, like a lot of people do it like they're chopping wood. How about you, Julio? Do you, do you ever use a hoe? Yeah, I used to. Yeah. The trick to being successful in getting the root out when you're hoeing in your garden is not to chop it like it's wood, but you go in and use that corner on an angle, and then that gets it into the soil, and then you pull, and you pull out that weed, and you get that root out. Not like, you know, you know, your Abraham Lincoln chopping locks. You know, you gotta go with that angle and get that point in first, and then pull, and then you just go ahead farther and farther, and you loosen that soil, you pull big weeds out, um, it, there's an art to it. There's an art to it. My daughter calls uh, the hoe. My daughter calls it a rounded spatula. A rounded, rounded spatula. Yeah, because it's got a hook on it. I said, is it like because it's a hook at the bottom of the where, stick? Where, where's, where's there a hook on a, on a hoe? At the bottom of the stick, you get it towards where it goes to the perpendicular point. There is a hook. There's a hook that goes right to the flat point of the hoe. I've never seen that one. Yeah. Mine's flat. Yeah, mine's mine's is it's a metal, it's a straight yep. metal piece. I'm trying to figure out though, is where it it's like is that the metal piece the that's L, welded? You know where the L point is. The yeah. L point. It's like that. It has oh, like okay. a so where it where it connects to the pole. Right. To to the to right, the to, to the, the flat portion. Pole. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so she's like, it's a rounded spatula. I was like, all right. Uh, all right. All right. I now it's, it's, it's I'm getting it. I'm getting it. This is radio. Good it's description. Different. Right, I was trying to trying to be as descriptive as possible. For, <laughs> yeah, no, hey, guys, for those that are listening in on radio, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, and you can see <laughs> what we're talking about. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, nice little shameless plug. <laughs> Where? <laughs> but again, it's it's not chopping wood; it's getting that corner in. So, if you only have a few weeds, pull them. Now, being I've confessed of my lazy streak, I'm spraying them. I'm spraying them, and I am going to use glyphosate. And there are an or there's an organic option, but the problem is, is it doesn't kill down to the root. It doesn't kill down to the root. Um, the one that we recommend is high yields kills all, and that the way that that works is that you have to be careful, but you can go right up close to the trunks or the the base of plants, but as long as you don't get that spray on the foliage, that plant will do fine, but the weeds will die and they'll die all the way down. And you only have one spraying. There's sometimes like we'll talk about it. It's like, oh, you need to do four applications. You need to just get it to the point where it coats the leaves and then runs off. And that uh, we certainly like the high yield super concentrate because that has a surfactant in it. There's a big word, surfactant. What that means is that it breaks down the concentration and and when you spray it, that it dissipates over the leaf better and that it sticks to leaf. So a lot of it's some some people call it a spreader sticker. Spreader sticker. A spreader sticker. If you use a spreader sticker. Yeah. Spreader sticker, what it does is is it takes the the droplets and makes them finer so that it will penetrate and stick to that leaf rather than than roll right off. So, uh, also that there's kills all 365. Why do I like that? Because that is a combination of a weed control as well as a weed preventer in the same 
bottle. It's available in a concentrate. It's available in an RTU. And that that's, I'm using that in my landscape oh, yeah. bed all over. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great one. Yep, yep. Now, if you're using the straight kills all, okay, and that if you're using that, so you can you can replant your garden next week. It's not going to affect new plantings where it's not like it's going to sit like poison in the ground. Right. That it's only a week. Do you have like grass seed? Like say, say you have a section of your lawn that's just filled with weeds, and that you spray with the kills all, and then you replant your grass seed a week later. So it gives it time for it to die, and then you got to get into that soil and plant your seed. The three sixty five is totally different. Three sixty five. It's the same active ingredient, but it has an additional ingredient. That is the one that that will be a preventer. preventer, and a lot of them have it. I I, I think that they're that BioAdvance has one that you'll notice that they all say three sixty five. They're kind of copying one another. That uh, again, uh, we're high yield. I believe is the best priced uh, product, and that's by VPG, um, which is Volunteer Purchasing Group. And that uh, it's again high yield is the is the brand by that company for kills all. Now there is an organic alternative alternative, and that's fertilome grass and weed killer. It's a non-selective, so both of these products that that it will kill what you spray. Okay, it's not something where you can go right in your lawn and it's going to kill just the weeds. This is going to kill whatever you spray. Uh, it's fast acting, and that again, this is fertilome grass and weed killer, and it is or- organic, and it uses um, ammoniated soap of fatty acids. And the problem is, it doesn't kill down to the roots. Yeah. So you'll see the tops die, but the root is still there. And it will come back. This is one of those things where the organic alternative, it's nice, but it's not effective. Complete. But if you are 100% organic gardener, that's what you're going to do. And like, forget these things. Like, remember we had the, I think it was last year or the year before, we had a listener call and she killed her entire lawn by spraying it with vinegar. Yeah, I remember. I don't try to be the mad scientist at home. It's like, well, if I had three parts vinegar and I put some vegetable oil and then I go and, you know, light it on fire, you know, just don't, just don't, just don't use this stuff, what, what it's made for. You know, you're trying to do all these things on the cheap or you're trying to do these things like, you know, it's like, oh, well, I just use Epsom salts, you know, look, in what amount? Are you doing it the right way? Do you have any instructions? The guy who is from Arizona that that is, you know, putting it in his, uh, you know, his his desert garden <laughs> is going to be different, different than knowledge. somebody in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or New York that is doing it in their in their garden. It's just different. Internet's a dangerous place because it doesn't always say what region of the country they're from. But you can trust us. We've got so many. We have so many videos on YouTube. Please subscribe and please on podcasts uh, gives a, you, know, you can find a lot of information for over five years now that we have lots and lots of information that you can trust for the New York tri-state area, the Delaware Valley for all basically zone, basically zone four up to zone eight. You can find information that you need and have success. I'll tell you, I, I, again, I know I have a brand new tree that's planted. I planted a Zelkova and I planted a Franklinia tree that is starting to bud and bloom. Thank you very much. Um, that I'm planting, I'm, I have to put a new landscape bed. So I'm just going right with the, okay. the kills, kills all. all. Yeah. I'm going to spray the bed and I'll spray the bread shape of that. I'll, I'll kill out the edge. I'll plant the landscape cover it up with mulch and I'll be confident that those weeds that were there are going to die. Anything to add, Julio? 
No, I think you're going to do a good job with this. Thank you. Yeah. You're not going to come help pull them by hand, though. No, I'm no? going to use that hoe. That, well, <laughs> maybe I'll get Ava to come oh, yeah. get that. Get you know, a rounded that's, spatula. That spatula. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> there you go. But honestly, um, glyphosate's gotten a lot of bad press. Uh, it's because there's a class action lawsuit and that, you know, there's a lot of, of it's the lawyers, man. Yeah. And uh, you, you need to, to wear gloves and you need to, to be precautious and, and careful. You read the instructions, damn it. I mean, <laughs> the, the lawsuit has some people that were that they were wearing a backpack that had a hole in it. And every day they'd go out and spray, but they'd get their back covered with the glyphosate. Now, uh, duh. Right. Anyway, um, anytime that we're recommending the products to use you need to follow the instructions do your homework read read the label 